This video is brought to you by Squarespace. More on that later. Terrain. How do we know where to start? I mean, just look at it. There are absolutely tons of different types of terrain, different materials, different styles, different companies. Uh, so it's really difficult to know what is going to suit the project you are working on. Well, that's the aim of this video. Hopefully I can help you come to a decision by looking at and showing you the advantages, the disadvantages, the cost, the time, the effort involved in using different companies and materials. A little bit about me is I run a hobby shop over here, Brawl Soul Wargaming, and I have people in playing all of the time. I've run some big tournaments down at the local hotel here. So I've run Blood Bowl events over in pubs. I've built a load of boards and display boards on the channel, some narrative ones, some little display pieces. I've built trees. So I'm hoping I can pass on some of my experience to you to help you come to the right decision so you don't waste your time or your money on something that isn't going to work. MDF terrain. I'm going to start here because I feel like this is one of the most commonly used materials you will see when it comes to wargaming terrain. Whether you're in a shop, running a tournament, or building something for yourself, this is always a cheap option. Now, cheap doesn't always mean bad. Um, MDF terrain has the advantage of coming flat packed, so it can be shipped for very little around the world. It does come in various quality differences, I suppose. Sometimes they use HDF or MDF. Some companies have them, so the central piece is there and you attach a front and a back on them, like Cromlet Games, or some other companies just have a slap piece, like TT Combat or Sarissa Precision, and these are generally more affordable. The Orc Ball build, I thought the terrain looked amazing, but it did take me about 50 hours of assembly. And that is something people don't often think about when it comes to MDF terrain. I've got here in my hand the Tabletop Scenics one. Now this is just three or four pieces you click together. Obviously because of that, it doesn't always look amazing. It's great, it does its job, it serves its purpose, but it is by no means the high quality stuff. With all of the MDF terrain, they are all quite messy. They can smell, they require gluing around and to undercoat them, a lot of people talk about different ways. In my experience, spray cans will do the job. Get a cheap Poundland spray can um, or Eurozone or wherever you are in the world and just spray them. Occasionally they can shrink and expand or like myself, if it gets wet or you leave it out in the shed, it can get moldy. Now obviously the more spray and stuff you have on them, the less likely that is to happen. But MDF terrain is a great option. It's cheap, it's inexpensive and it does the job. Plastic. When you think of terrain, you're generally thinking of Games Workshop stuff. And with Games Workshop comes a price. And that price is something you're either willing to pay or you're not, and that's perfectly acceptable. I've got Games Workshop plastic, I've got Mantic plastic. Both of these I have worked on uh, quite extensively, and I really like both of them. This is the Ruin City Mantic Terrain Crate stuff. I really liked it, it's modular, it comes in squares, it has little clippers for like attaching it, and you can build it in any ways you like. You can also take it apart and rearrange it. So when it comes to terrain, you're getting more value for your money from the same piece. Top of the heap really for plastic terrain that you'll know of is Games Workshop. And lately they have been pumping this stuff out for various games for Warcry, Age of Sigmar, 40K, Kill Team. You can normally find it cheap in the big mega boxes, things like Warcry, where I did the Heart of Gur terrain here. This really is amazing. The Thondia stuff for Age of Sigmar, I really liked. Obviously it's expensive, it does require painting and assembly, although it doesn't really smell like the MDF and you don't get as messy from it. I don't know what I need to say about plastic terrain that you don't already know, other than that it does look really good. So I, I think generally this looks better than MDF terrain and is one of the better options, but of course it comes at a price. If you're building a display or a demo board, you may only need one or two pieces, so that is probably perfect for that. Resin. This is also a mainstay of the Battle Report channels you watch around, I'm sure. And that is terrain from GameMat EU and UrbanMats.com. These are both GameMat EU. These are the only ones I've really worked with. Although I have got some other resin pieces, kind of small scatter terrain. Um, how do I feel about resin terrain? Now, all this stuff from GameMat comes pre-painted. That's an advantage. It comes pre-assembled. Um, it is quite heavy. It is quite large, but it does look pretty good. Would they survive a dropping? Generally, yes, I have chipped a few bits over the years, but I mean, I've had this now for, for three or four years. I added some rough bits to it uh, and, you know, some, some gravel and rubble. It's good. It does the job. It generally only tends to be three or four pieces repeated on a board. But if you're just looking for something you can pull out with your friends, have a game on, feel relatively comfortable if it's painted, don't require, you know, a lot of work, this will do the job. Is it super fancy? Is it super high end? No. I like it. Personally, it's all down to personal taste. I like it, I don't love it. Um, although you do find good bundles, 
Price is always subjective. It's down to you what you're willing to pay. So yeah, I don't know what to say about resin terrain other than it comes, it's heavy, it's big, and don't drop it. Now it's time for a quick word from our sponsors, Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform. It's easy to set up and comes with a ton of pre-built website templates. I managed to add products, logos, and designs in just a few minutes. You could use this to sell your miniatures or terrain, or perhaps you just want a way to help you to stay focused and show off some of your projects. If so, why not make a blog, even if it's just for yourself? Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash broadsword wargaming to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Right, let's get back to the video. 3D printed. 3D printed terrain. I have different feelings about this actually. The very first thing I printed was this big mad treehouse and it didn't require much skill. Uh, I've definitely improved since I did this, this several years ago, but it's still intact, it's still unpainted admittedly, but it's pretty cool. It comes apart, you can magnetize them. It's very good. I bought terrain from MyScenery.fr, Forge Lord 3D, Wargame Sceneries. I've also printed it myself from Extalia, and Jim from Artificious Forge has helped me print some too, and I paid for that. Buying 3D printed terrain kind of feels, in the long run, like something you shouldn't do, right? Because you could buy a printer and print it yourself with relative ease. Um, I will have a few things to say about that. And having printed a load of terrain myself for a big tournament I did, I ran a WTC style terrain tournament. I required 32 tables of terrain. It's like 800 pieces of terrain, basically. Could I print that on my own in a realistic time frame? Absolutely not. It takes ages. Yes, you can print it yourself. Yes, it is relatively inexpensive, but it comes at a cost of time, uh, electricity. You still need to buy the filament as well. That can be sort of 25, 30 euros a sheet, depends where you're getting it from. My main tip here is don't print it in any other color than the color you're kind of going to have it in. So for me, gray or black. I printed a load of terrain in green and I ended up having to spray it all black. And I spent something like, on all this terrain, maybe 300 euros on cheap one, two euro can spray cans. The 3D printed stuff I bought varied in cost and price. Um, some of this I think probably is quite expensive for what it is you get, although it is very good. The top of the tier four jaw 3D stuff was a full table of terrain, but cost me around 250 euros, I think at the time, for a table of it. The Mycenary FR stuff, this is 3D printed Extalia terrain, which you can print yourself, but came pre-painted, came kind of pre-assembled, you just glue a few sections together. If it's just for yourself, for home use, this stuff here is magnetized. So it clicks together quite easily. You can stack this as high as you like. You can also pack it away quite comfortably as it all just sits together. So 3D printed terrain, brilliant, varied in styles, but there are tons of different styles out there. The files are pretty cheap generally, or you can sign up to someone's Patreon uh, and print that stuff regularly. So yeah, huge scope in what you can get. Um, and you can, the price varies depending on what it is you're getting or if you're printing it yourself. Homemade. You can do this um, with absolutely anything. I think when I was a kid, I used to play floor hammer. We'd have like a pillow would be some terrain. A chair would be a building. Um, and there's really no scope to how, how expensive or cheap this can be. I've made a fair bit of terrain myself. I've made things like trees. You'll see a video again um, where I made these several years ago and they are still here intact. They aren't free. I had to buy the armatures, I had to buy the foliage, the flock, the, the general materials to make them. But overall, I think for the amount of stuff you can make, uh, it's relatively inexpensive. And depending on your skill level, it's, it's a new hobby for you. It's something you can spend time on and learn. It's something you can just do on the cheap and knock out. Coke cans, kids toys, we've seen it all over the years. And these are all different ways you can make the train yourself. If you're looking for a professional board and this isn't something you've done much, it might not look great to begin with, but keep working on it and it will look better. Personally, I don't have a lot of time outside of doing videos to work on terrain myself. Um, I've also got things in store and terrain you work on yourself might not be as durable as something you can buy. So do take that into account as well. So there we go. I hope that helps you. I realize there's a whole ton of linked videos throughout that, um, but I'm hoping they can help you 
see how things work, see how I've painted stuff, see how difficult things are to assemble, how easy they are to print or easy they are to paint, because that's all a part of it. Time versus money versus skill. Uh, there are things you need to wear up and balance if it comes to the project you're looking to do. If there's anything you need help with or any questions you have, do feel free to ask them down in the comments. If you want more personal support, think about joining the Patreon where I have a private Discord and you have access to myself generally. I'm in there every day chatting rubbish. There's a fair few others in there as well and we can all help you out. There's also links down there to my shop and that'll help the channel too. So hopefully this video, more than anything, has helped you decide the kind of stuff you want and I've shown you a good amount of it. With that, I'm all done. Thanks very much and I'll catch you in the next video.